Hey everyone, I'm Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. If you could take a second, can you please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button? I'd really appreciate it. Again and again, thanks a lot for stopping by. You know, sometimes I forget what it's like to have early sobriety. Like, you know, just starting out in sobriety, the first six months or three months or a year or two years. I forget sometimes and I have many years of sobriety and it's hard sometimes to identify what it was like when I first came in because when I came in is much different than what it's like now. I've asked people on my YouTube channel if there's something they would like me to talk about. And a young lady who watches me often for the last, I think about six months to a year, asked me to do a, a video on cravings. And you know, cravings are something that people talk about a lot. Oh, I'm craving alcohol but a lot of us don't understand. And in this video, I'm gonna give you an explanation about two kinds of cravings. So let's start out with the first type of craving there is. In the first five to 10 days of alcohol, when you stop drinking, you're gonna get a withdrawal. And within that withdrawal, you're gonna get a craving for alcohol. It's like, I don't know if you ever quit smoking, your body just screams, for nicotine, the same thing that happens in early recovery. Your body screams for the alcohol. So the first four, six, eight, 10 days when you quit alcohol, if you're like me, your body just wanted it. It's like caffeine. Your body's just craving. It's a physical, it's a physical craving. And in those times, it's very easy to understand why we're craving. It's because if you're anything like me, I drank every day for every week, for years and years and years. And when my body stopped getting alcohol, I had heart palpitations, I was a nervous wreck, I was antsy, I was all these kind of things. I was experiencing anxiety, depression, I couldn't sleep properly. And I knew what would cure all that. And what it was is a drink. So that's the first type of cravings you get is the initial time in the withdrawal stage when you quit alcohol, you get that craving, that body wants the booze, like you want caffeine or if you quit cigarettes or that kind of thing, but it's really powerful. And a lot of us have a hard time getting over that stage the first little while, but that stage goes away. Once our bodies have completely uh, went through the withdrawal, withdrawal time, we, you know, we don't have any more booze in our body, so our body doesn't crave it anymore or it shouldn't crave it. It really, and that's clinical. You can look it up on your Google or, or YouTube and they'll explain it more in more medical terms. But basically that's what happened to me. So my body was wanting alcohol. So that's the first type of craving. People don't understand this type of craving. And that's the craving number two. It's like, we're going to meetings, we're talking to our sponsors, we're going to therapy, we're going to group, we're doing everything we can to stay clean and sober one day at a time, but I get cravings to drink. And the difference is between a craving, it's not like somebody saying, I want to drink, I'm going to go out and drink. It's not like they're saying that. And a lot of people think that when people say in 12 step groups or wherever you are, oh man, I'm craving alcohol. If people might interpret it, oh, that person just wants to go out and drink. It's not about that has nothing to do with it. If I wanted to go out and drink even to this day, there's nobody out there in YouTube land or anywhere that would make me drink. I would just go out and have a drink. No one ever put a gun to my head to drink and no one will ever put a, head, a gun to my head for me to relapse and go out and drink. But it's not like that at all. A craving is like you feel like you're compelled to drink. It's neurological. It affects our emotions. It takes over our emotions in our minds. And it feels like a compulsion to drink. Even when you're clean and sober for many, many days or many weeks or many years, you can still get that. And what is that? What is that compulsion to drink? A lot of us don't understand it. A lot of us think, oh, we're doing something wrong or we're questioning it. But basically what it is, and listen up, okay? Because this is what happened to me. What happens is our bodies, after we've drank for many, many years, our mind and our emotions are sort of connected together. So if I feel stress, it's a trigger. 
And because it is a trigger, it might be followed up with a craving. If I used alcohol to soothe myself when I was stressed out, when, I was, when I'm stressed out, that might be a craving attached to that. I hope it makes sense. I'll give it a little simpler. I had a problem with anger and I still have a problem with anger, but not as much as I used to. So when I get angry or if I'm on a, you know, at a step with people in early sobriety, especially, I always felt a craving coming after it because I used alcohol to control my emotions. You know, it's like going out on a date, you're really nervous. And if you used alcohol to calm that anxiety before you went out on the date, more likely when that situation arises in your recovery, you're going to have a craving more than likely. And if you don't, that's great too. But if you do, that's kind of where it's generated from. It's almost like, you know, we heard those terms triggers. Cravings are so damn hard to understand because it's like a compulsion. It's compelling us to drink. It takes over. It's like an inner voice saying, just drink Terry and that problem will go away. It has, it's almost like there's two of us. There's the silver us, the silver side of us, and there's the part that is craving. But it's the self-conscious, it's the mind and the emotions are so used to view using alcohol or drugs to cope with situations. When those triggers arise, the craving is right behind it. Boom, and it can punch you right in the face, those cravings. It can make us question our sobriety, make us question our what we're doing with ourselves, make us maybe even want to drink, maybe even go relapse and do have a drink. It can do that, it really, really can. So when somebody comes up to you and says they're craving, it's not like they're saying, I just want to go out and have a drink. No, cravings are real. They're compelling, they want us to compel us to drink, they push us to want to drink, and it's a neurological thing and an emotional thing, and we use the alcohol to cope with our lives. And when there's triggers in our lives, that craving will come. You're feeling lonely. You're feeling anxious. You're feeling anger. You're feeling hurt. You're feeling nervous to go to the interview. You're feeling happy. It can be a lot of different things that trigger a craving. But the reality of it is, they are not to be made afraid of. We need to understand what the craving is. And that is basically what a craving is. It's a compulsion. It makes us want to drink. And they're, they're triggered by our triggers or by situations in our lives that we used to drink a lot at, like a party. I could go on and on about it. If you don't get what I'm saying or you need more explanation, by all means, leave a comment below and I could do another video on it or answer you in the comments. So what are we supposed to do when we get cravings? What are we supposed to do? And, and, and I want to emphasize this truly with you. Cravings go away. They really do. Sometimes people have cravings, this second type of craving, for many years into their sobriety. You know, I went through a separation about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and I was craving alcohol like crazy. It scared me so bad. I went through this breakup. I had a lot of emotional problems going on, a lot of trauma going on, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of anger, blah, blah, blah. And what came up right behind it was cravings. And the cravings make me feel sort of out of control. But I understand what it is. I really do. I understand what it is. Cravings for themselves usually go away in 10 to 20 minutes. That's how long, long they usually last. For myself, I understand them. I don't kick them out of my head. I sort of accept them. And this is what I'm telling you. Understand that you're going through a craving. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't act on it. But understand that you are going through that craving, okay? And the things that I do, call my sponsor, go out, distract myself a little bit from it. Understand that it will go away and it's a part of the recovery. There's a person in AA that started AA, his name was Dr. Bob. He had, phys he had cravings, like I'm describing in this video, for five years in his sobriety. Five, five, five years in his sobriety, he had cravings, but they did go away. I had cravings a lot in the first year, first 18 months, you know, when triggers came up. I had a lot of court cases I was going through, a lot of problems in my life in early sobriety, so it triggered a lot of cravings. So do mindfulness. 
Think of great things. Get your mind off it. Okay? Sit with it. What is causing the craving? What is causing it? And did my boyfriend just break up with me? Am I going out on a date? Do I feel hurt? Do I feel angry? Do I feel hungry? Am I tired? Where is this craving coming from? If I sit with it a little bit, I can start to understand where the craving is coming from. And I know they are scary because they're compelling. They want to, they're kind of drawing us to the alcohol. But understanding it, distracting ourselves from it. Continue to do what you're doing. If you're driving to work, go to work. Talk to your work, your work buddies. Continue throughout your life. Don't stop. Don't stop doing what you're doing, okay? If you're doing housework or you're painting your car, or you're doing carpentry, or you're like me driving the bus, just sit with it and it will pass. About 10 to 20 minutes, usually 20 minutes on the long end, they're gone. Do some mindfulness, but don't react to it. They can be scary, they can be overwhelming, but it's a part of the process. Our minds and our emotions will reset, the rewire over time, and those cravings that I'm talking about here in this video, the craving number two, will subside over time. I guarantee it, but if we, if we give in to them, we drink when we crave, it makes it harder for the next time when we want to stop drinking, when we want to not cravings, when we don't want to relapse, okay? So I hope I explained it properly. If you're craving, it's normal. It really is. It's scary. It can make us doubt ourselves. It can make us not understand what's going on. It can make us feel hopeless in a situation when, in a time when things are going very well. But it's a process of the recovery. Alcohol is a chemical. We drank a lot of it. I drank a lot of it. It screwed up my mind. It screwed up my emotions. It screwed up me physically in all areas of my life. So I need to give myself some time for my body to reset itself and come back to a normal way of thinking, if you know what I mean, okay? So I just wanna say, if you have any more questions about cravings or you need a hand with it, or if you find this video good and you, you think that it's a great video, leave a comment below, I'd, I'd really like that. And I wanna th thank the person who suggested that I do a video on cravings because I never thought of it. And it's a really important thing to talk about. Cravings can lead to relapse. Just remember there's two types, right? There's the initial body craving you get at the beginning in the withdrawal stage that can last from four to 10 to, to two weeks, 14 weeks. We can crave it, our bodies can crave it. Then there's the other craving that we get that are basically set off from triggers old beliefs, old habits, and our just body, our mind and our emotions need time to rewire themselves for lesser words. But don't be afraid of it. Walk through it. Continue to have a great support network. And when you have these cravings that you feel like you're compelled to drink, do some mindfulness, phone somebody, go for a walk, do what you're doing. Don't stop doing what you're doing. If you're going to work or whatever, and just try and understand what's going on. What's causing this trigger? Oh yeah, I'm mad at my mother. Oh yeah, I'm afraid that I won't have enough money. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm hurt, my boyfriend just left me. Or I gotta go on a date and I'm really nervous. So I'm getting a trigger or I'm getting a craving for alcohol because we used alcohol in our lives to cope with our lives every single day, didn't we? Didn't we do that? I know I did. Alcohol reached into every nook and cranny of my life. My mind and my emotions, that's all it ever knew for many, many years. Problem, drink. Happy, drink. Sex, drink. Whatever it was, there was a drink involved, okay? There was a drink involved. And just remember though, okay? A sober life is a great life. It really, really is. It can make your life fantastic but it takes time and it takes work and it takes understanding if you're having difficulties in your sobriety reach out to people reach out to your doctor go to a therapist go to an addiction counselor talk to your priest talk to your minister don't be alone don't sit there and think that you're alone to take on the world okay don't think that because i used to think like that and it never worked for me it just made me more crazy okay so 
Thanks a lot for stopping by and watching my video. I'm Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we're learning to live sober one day at a time, okay? If you could take a second, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, hit my like button, I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to stop by next time and watch another great video on my channel, okay? So as I usually say, stay safe, stay sober, God bless, one day at a time. I'm checking out. Ciao for now. Bye, 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 bye.